Conversational AI, credit collections, what are we here for? Uh, I'm Paul Sweeney. I'm co-founder and chief strategy officer here at Webio, joined today by Q, uh, our head of AI and um, machine learning at Webio, and Enzo, our director of business development here at Webio. So we've got the full team here. Just like to say that, you know, what we're about really is the world is full of late payments and they happen for a bunch of reasons. It could be anything from, you know, you forgot or maybe a direct debit has failed. Maybe you didn't have enough in your account. There is a whole range of reasons why late payments don't happen. But for some people, late payments are a consistent and persistent problem with them. And they owe money, probably not to just one company, but five, six, seven different companies. And they have to engage with each of those companies and it becomes deeply frustrating for them. And yeah. it becomes a real overhead for them to manage. And frankly, what happens is they just disengage. They just go, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. Everyone understands instinctively that money is really emotional. If if you were like if your wages get paid late or you feel that you've been shortchanged in a shop or you are discussing your bills, you understand that it's actually you feel it in your body. You get tense, you get uptight and you get confrontational a lot of the time. So money in itself is a very emotional issue. But if you can create better context, you create better understanding. If you know why somebody is late or you know something about their life or something about them, it gives you the opportunity to create options. So context creates understanding. And that allows you to develop flexible offerings to customers. Flexibility is in itself empowering. If you say, um, it doesn't matter if you can't pay today, can you pay tomorrow or Monday? And they go, yep. I can pay it next Monday. That little bit of flexibility with them really makes them feel empowered. And if you can then give tools to the customer or allow the customer to interrogate their file or or start asking questions about the service or how it might be changed or why they're being charged in a certain way or how they might save more money doing something else, that is entirely liberating for them because they're not stuck with your diktat. They can actually get engaged with you to change their circumstances. And so there's a fundamental change happening in the credit collections industry. And that change is, it's not about getting debt out of the person, but getting the person out of debt. And once you understand that framing, your job becomes entirely different. So what we're doing is we're revolutionizing the credit collections world using the power of tailored AI or custom AI solutions. And that's what we're going to talk to you about today. And it's all about precision and context. So it's not enough to know that someone's just trying to get a bill paid or, or, or it's about a bill. It's, I need to change my bill. I need to not pay. I need to negotiate around my payment. There's a whole range of micro contexts in there that if you could understand it or identify them, you would act differently. And you have to figure out where the data is around the conversation and how that might be impactful. So like, has this person been a good pair? Have they been a consistent pair? Maybe they're the type of person who frequently their account like doesn't um, automatically pay out the money, but they do self-cure on that account, I, that means that they do come back and fix it and pay, or maybe they're a very high value customer. You treat each of these circumstances differently if you had that data. And in this business, you really have to be compliance by design. And that means full traceability, everything from how you've asked a question to the models that delivered those answers to that question. From the front to the very back, you need full traceability across the solution. And our customers are very busy and they have limited IT and software resources. And that means they don't want to go out and get a bunch of different services, stitch them together and try and make them work. Or worse still, get a bunch of other services, stitch them together to get your service to work. And they're very data driven. So they need to look at measurable impact. What can they do with AI that they can measure for their business today? Now, Rather than go on and talk about what we do in AI, et cetera, let's just hand over to Enzo here and see if Enzo can 
get a demo for us of just show everybody what's happening in AI today with Webio. This is what the agent would see. Now, what I'm trying to do is mirror my phone because what I thought I'd do is demonstrate how this works on the phone itself. Okay. So hopefully now what you're looking at is the Webio website. Yep. Okay, wonderful. So this is now on my mobile phone. We're replicating the iPhone on the screen. You've got two widgets, bottom right-hand corner. The red widget is for web chat, and the green widget is for WhatsApp. And today, we're going to be using WhatsApp. Many of our customers use WhatsApp business. Um, they find the engagement rates with it is phenomenal because WhatsApp is a tried and tested messaging service that people feel comfortable with because they use it amongst family and friends. And that's certainly been part of its success story because it's not intrusive for our customers when they're receiving messages from whoever it is that's maybe looking for them um, through a WhatsApp message. So we're going to go straight to the WhatsApp. Um, I'm just going to tee this up. So if you bear with me one second. And today, obviously, we are talking about the world of collections. So hopefully this is going to generate a message for me now that you'll see come up on the screen. And you can make, I always say this to all our customers, every message, much as we will help you do with all the setup, every message is customizable by them. They can choose the messages, the initial messages, the follow-up messages that they send. And of course, you can see from WhatsApp, the beauty of it being WhatsApp business is branded. That gives that company that, that level of comfort that they're sending out a message. You've got your logo at the top. Um, and you've got your brand name as well, which means if I receive the message, I know it's genuine. So in this case, Graham's in trouble, owes some money. Sue, the automated receptionist, says, it looks like you've missed your last two payments. We'd like to help you get back on track. Please reply with the reason why, and a specialist agent will get back to you. And if you'd like to catch up now by making a payment, let us know and we'll come back to you with a secure link. So it's always initially saying, look, I think Paul mentioned this earlier, maybe sometimes people just forget. And if they forget, that's not a problem. You could say, I'd like to make a payment. The system will present you with a link. You can go to the link and then enter your credit card details. But in this case, that's not the case. And Graham hasn't forgotten to pay, just doesn't have the money. So let's just um, give this um, an example. And what we're showing here is, you know, I've lost my job and I'm struggling to pay. That simple. So we've sent that message back. And at that point, first thing I'd like to point out is this is the power of conversational AI. You can have a conversation with this system the way I could be talking to you in a cafe. You've asked me for some money, but I'm telling you why I haven't got the money. That's the difference between dumb bot technology and a conversational AI. So what the conversational AI technology does is it reads it. You've told me you've lost your job. So it says, it sounds like your circumstances have changed. It's showing some empathy, it's understanding. You're telling me you're struggling to pay. Okay, so if we're struggling to pay, how about we fill in an income and expenditure form and one of our agents can come back to you with a suitable plan. So it's understood and read two pieces of information and it's coming back and it's continuing to engage with the customer rather than end up like a dumb bot and shutting it down. It's saying, OK, we can keep the conversation going. Let's just see how bad the finances are or how good as the case may be. Again, nice and simple. I have a link. I can tap the link. It's on my mobile phone. It's going to keep me engaged. I'm not having to go elsewhere. And again, with these surveys or with these income and expenditure forms, they are all completely customizable with your logo on it. The questions can be yours. So what we'll do is just we won't spend too much time on this, but we'll go through this quickly just to give you an idea. In terms of money they get per month, we'll just put in a thousand. Um, we have two adults that live off the income. We've got two children that live off the income. We're paying £500 towards our bills, our mortgage rather. We're paying £100 towards our bills. And we don't have any outstanding credit card loans. And there's nothing else we'd like to tell you about our situation. And we like the survey, so we'll give it five stars. So that's now gone through. We've entered all that information. They can be as lengthy or as short as you want. We go back to the WhatsApp window. It thanks us for completing the form. And it tells us that an agent will be back to help us very shortly. So you can see the way the system is reading and understanding. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop mirroring. Um, hopefully you can now see my desktop. Yep. And what we're going to do is let's assume at that point that um, we came out of that conversation. 
and we came through as a live agent. I wanted some help. I need to come through. The worst thing you can do is if you are coming through to a live agent and I turn around and tap in, how can I help you today? I've just spent 10 minutes of my life telling you about my problems, but here it's nice and easy. You can see I've looked down here and I've seen, oh dear, Graham's lost his job, struggling to pay. I can see what the AI has responded. And because it's color coded, I can also see that Graham has filled in the income and expenditure form. It's nice and simple for me. Now, the other thing is, if you look to the right, you will see propensities. And what you can see to show the intelligence of the system is that the system has identified and read what it's seen. It's seen the communication request come in at that allotted time. More importantly, it spotted a potential vulnerability because Graham said, I've lost my job. And it's identified and read that using its propensities and intents to say there is the vulnerability at 416. So just to give it another something else to think about, let's give it something else I'm going to send. I've now sent it another message from my phone. And this time, because it's very topical and vulnerable customers, um, certainly it's something that concerns a lot of our customers. I've put, I've got mental health issues. If I then go back to the propensities, again, can you see the intelligence of the system? It's read it. It's understood it. It's now flagging to me as an agent that at 420, I have health vulnerabilities as well as a potential life-changing vulnerability. And that demonstrates how the system is intelligent enough to read and understand and spot those vulnerabilities. And they come in various forms. One last thing I'm going to show you is let's tap in something else. I'm going to send it another message. And this is now to show an intent. This one's going to be a little bit more concentrated. I apologize. My children seem to be able to tap at a rate of knots with two thumbs. I tend to still use the one thumb technique. Um, so I'm now sending in another message. And this time I've put, I get paid at the weekend and I can pay £50 next Monday. If I now go to the entities, again, you can see the intelligence of the system. It's picked up that I've said I will pay £50 and it's intelligent enough to work out next Monday is the 28th of October. And it's written that down. And all that there is in an audited trail of information. It's collected it. We can look back at this conversation at any point and see the vulnerabilities that it detected, the life changing events it detected and the entities it detected. And I think, Paul, um, yeah. that, that kind of gives you a hopefully a bit of a flavor for how the system uses its intelligence to collect it, what's been typed. It does. And before you you stop sc uh, sharing screen there, Enzo, I'd just like to draw uh, people's attention to the right-hand side there where we're talking about the entities, the propensities, the conversational highlights, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. This is where your kind of co-pilot or intelligent assistant is going to sit. It's going to be there. It's going to be listening to your conversation, picking out the bits that are required, doing automations for you, maybe giving you some advice on what's happening with your customers. Are they starting to become vulnerable? Are they starting to display financial vulnerabilities, et cetera? And that's where a niche uh, credit and collections model drives this kind of interface. And we believe you have to have complete control of this interface and the language model in the background to be able to drive these applications. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand over to Q here and just go, Q, why don't you show us what actually drives this stuff here? And uh, if we can overcome the uh, complexities of working Zoom, that is. Cool. I was just going to say that I'm going to try and be a little bit smoother than both of you. So Yeah. Oh, no, oh. I can still see you, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to I was going to say something rude, but I won't because it's been good. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks, uh, Enzo. Um, great demo there. Um, so I'm the head of AI and machine learning for Webio. Um, I joined just over um, four years ago. Um, and when I joined, the, the requirement was really just to focus on delivering high quality AI. Uh, even back then, you know, AI was 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 really sexy. I mean, it's, it's sexy now, obviously, because of uh, LLMs and ChatGPT and OpenAI and all that kind of stuff. But even back then, you know, there was lots of really interesting stuff going on. Um, and really what we want to focus on is just making sure that when we were releasing features that um, had AI built into them, uh, like what uh, Enzo 
uh, demonstrated there on the right hand side with picking out the propensities and the intents and the dates and all that kind of stuff out of natural language that comes into the system. We want to make sure that it did a really good job of it. Um, so that was the, that was our, the the requirement. And like I've been working in AI for quite a while. And uh, if you've worked in AI, if you've managed a project over a number of years or you've worked on a number of projects, that um, data becomes the, the, the biggest issue, managing data. After a while, you know, you pick your models, you pick your techniques, and they become uh, fairly solid after after a bit of time. But data is something that you work on, and it's just such a uh, work on continuously, sorry. Um, and it's just something that, is just vitally important um, in the sort of the AI stack, as it were. Um, and that involves sourcing the data, preparing it, managing, and training it. Um, so what we decided to do from day one was control everything in the stack. So we took uh, a number of open source models that helped solve some specific problems for us. We fine-tuned it for credit and collections. Um, and so we we just made sure that we we controlled everything in the stack and that allowed us to have better orchestration. So if we needed to change something quickly, we could. We didn't need to rely on um, an outside supplier to fix something or add something so we could have better information or more information from something. Um, I just, and, this is a, you know, five minute warning, okay? Five minute, okay. Um, so in, in terms of the orchestration then there are models, data and pipelines, um, and tools involved, um, sort of in 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 the stack. Mm. Okay, um, so really, the 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 key for us was how to manage our models, whether they're small, medium, large. So we have multiple models. We have small models, we have medium models, and we have LLMs or large models uh, in, in our stack. Um, and in terms of the the work that they need to do. The first thing that we do is we evaluate a model. So we might take an open source model and we want to see how good it is. So we have some data that we fire at it to see how well it performs on a particular task. And if we feel it's good enough, then we'll fine tune it for our needs. Then we'll continually reevaluate it as we add more data and as we customize, it, say, for a customer and so on. Um, and then after that, we're doing training, we're fine tuning it. Uh, and a couple of really important things from our side uh, in terms of managing the models is that we need we want to version and track them so typically we could work we could uh, iterate on a model a few times a day and as we add more propensities add more models or whatever or sorry more models more um data into our propensities to improve recognition or whatever uh, we want to make sure that we track the changes as we go along because we might find that version from say two days ago did a better job on a particular propensity the one that we, we're working on at the moment for some reason isn't doing a good job so we want to be able to roll back and uh, do all of that kind of stuff with it so again just on day one we decided to sort of build our own tools now i did a good bit of work um over the years looking at open source tools and tools that were out, uh, out there in the market and nothing they were very powerful, but nothing really did a good job of what we needed, which was very specific sort of functionality that we wanted, that we could control, that we could um, uh, you know, add features to uh, whenever we wanted. And what that allowed us to do was we were able to then manage um, our data, I think, much, much better. And we were able to build just the features that we need and not have this sort of Swiss Army knife of a data science yeah. tool that took a huge amount Um and uh, you know maybe doesn't fit fit us um, really well. Um, of course, there's more time up front in terms of developing the tools, but the benefits down the line means that we have a much deeper and much much more nuanced understanding of our customers' data, and we get there faster. Uh, and the tighter integration obviously just allows us to be way more flexible um, in our platform and solve uh, you know our customer issues much quicker. Um, so then, in terms of the tools, we built two main tools. One is called Jupyter. Uh, that helps us manage uh, our models and data set metrics. Um, and this allows us to kind of just ensure that we have very high quality um, inference um, uh, classifications and in the generative AI work that that's done at a really high level and also to make it as predictable as possible uh, at, at scale. Uh, so that's Jupyter. Uh, then in terms of Hopper, Hopper um, is sort of the annotation tool and helps us manage our models and the data set that goes into our models. Um, and then also, uh, finally, then, uh, we're able to manage different languages within Hopper as well. So with Hopper, then, what we do is we'll create a data set, uh, we'll train it, 
we have a model, we deploy that model, and then with Jupyter, we'll test it. And the first thing that we'll do is run data through it that it's never been trained on to see how good it is. And that's when we know if it's good or if we need to make uh, some improvements to it. So ju just then um, with the sort of the ecosystem that we have, just as, our, uh, as an overall, um, on the left-hand side, we have uh, the WebVIA platform. We have an uh, AI API, API gateway, um, which hides all of the AI services that we have, the models, the agents uh, that we have that works with our models um, and the functionality that we sort of provide through the API. So we have smart scan, we have conversation summaries, smart assistants, entity engines, and so forth. And then we have this root routing layer in the middle, and that figures out where things will go and how uh, it's to respond to uh, the platform. Okay. Um, how are we for time? You. Okay, I think we're we're up for time. I think at this stage. Okay, so just two quick slides, and okay. we should be good. So then, this is just Jupiter. This is just an example of uh, a message, um, and what Enzo was showing there. This is what's going on under the hood, and mm -hmm. it understands the message, breaks it down, it gives us an understanding of what it thinks it is and how confident it thinks something is. So in this case, it thinks it's a promise to pay. It's ninety nine percent. Uh, sure, and it's picked out all of the entities and so on. And really, the power of this isn't just the the, the the single message, but we can fire thousands of messages at a model. We can fire at a couple of models that we have, and then we can do a comparison. And this is the comparison. So we have two models here. We fired, um, in, in this case, like 500 messages, um, and it's broken it down into the different uh, entities and propensities it, um, it thinks they are. And then the, just in the, the bottom part, then we have um, just this uh, histogram and that's showing the darker colors are the ones where it hasn't picked things up correctly. So we can dive into that, improve those, uh, train and re redeploy. So these are just some more visualizations in terms of comparing models, uh, accuracy of models and so on. This is Hopper. So this is the data. We'll select the data that we want for a particular model, train it, um, test it in Jupyter. If there's any issues, we go back into Hopper, make those improvements and so on. Uh, some more uh, images there. Um, so then just to sort of round up, um, the, the approach that we took was to control everything, build custom tools to solve data science problems for our customers. So they're not general data science problems as such, they're credit collection data science problems. And that allows us to, to deliver really high quality AI at a scale in different languages. Um, and really what that allowed us to do was have a real deep understanding of our customer um, the customer's data, the issues that they have, and we're able to deliver on features that solve real um, AI features that solve real uh, customer problems. Yeah, cool. Excellent demo. Thank you so much. It was really good to see that demo finally. So uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Now, is this built so it runs on-prem or are you cloud-based? We're cloud-based. Gotcha. Understood. And do you have like a geographic like region within that or is it just on aws it could be anywhere or so it's 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 in europe gotcha. um cool. so uh, just from compliance point of view for our customers it's in a particular region um with all of the gdpr stuff all uh tied excellent up. excellent <laughs> just confirming because it is a very sensitive issue uh especially when you're dealing with uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, uh debt and uh, all the regulations that are around that. But again, guys, because of time, I'm just going to have to say thank you. Excellent work. Really pleased to see the progression and to see the demo and WhatsApp integration. And absolutely, outside of North America, WhatsApp is by far the most sensible interface to use. Uh, it's you know, The US is a bit more complex. But again, guys, well done. Thanks, folks.